morning. I'm going to talk about a topic here, things that keep coming up. You folks that are watching my videos having difficulty finding a finding an accurate load for your rifle. Well, you know quite frankly, normally when I shoot a rifle, start shooting a ri rifle, start working up loads. The rifle doesn't shoot accurately for me either. So it's no different other than the fact that I've got a lot of experience and, and have a pretty good educated idea of where to head with this situation. So let's say for instance we're let's say for instance we're working with a 300 Winchester Magnum. This particular target here you can see bullet holes all over the target. And these are not groups. These are patterns. These are patterns until I found a load. And basically, I ran through four different makes of bullets. One make of primers, I mean one make of cartridge cases, two different primers, and, and one powder, and three different charge weights. And I wasn't getting any kind of accuracy to speak of whatsoever. I was a little bit dismayed, just like a lot of you folks are. And I'm going to point out here a few things as near as I can from sitting behind everything here. These couple of shots right here are to check where the rifle was zeroed. My next three shots, here's a, here's a, here's a three shot pattern. Well, that's not too good. That's something of around two and five eighths inches or better. So, I changed the powder charge and I shot. And I got this about half the size of this other one. Well, I thought that I was on to something, but really I wasn't. The next time that I, the next time that I shot the rifle, I had up my charge another half a grain, started here, went up a half grain, from there I went up a half grain, then I shot these three shots up here. These three shots here are just about like these three here. Well, now, I've been, you know, through this three different times, and I don't seem to be gaining very much. So, I switched bullet weights. And anyway, no, I switched to a different brand of bullet. And I shot a three-shot group. Well, Here's, here's a three-shot group right here, pattern, really. That's not any better. And by this time, I've got quite a few bullet holes on the paper. I actually switched to another, switched the target right, right to the side of it. I can't hold them both up. And I'm still getting the same sort of thing. I've tried another bullet. This time, I tried a different primer. I didn't get anywhere. I started right where I'd left off with the charge that I'd had previous couple of three shot strings here. I didn't get anywhere. So I switched to yet another bullet using now this this primer that I that I you know substituted. Started out with Winchester primers, went to Win to Federal 215 primers, Winchester large rifle primers, what I started with. And by the way, folks, that's very near identically the same primer in its energy value as the Federal 215. Few people know it, but I'll, I, I'll repeat that. It's very close. So, anyway, I thought, well, I'll try, I'll try another bullet. 
I tried another bullet. Now it's the fourth bullet. The fourth bullet. And I'm still not getting I'm still not getting a, anything near what I want. I want to see something tightening down in there, probably under three quarters of an inch or better. And I went to my reloading cabinet and I sorted through various things because I have quite a quite an array of different different bullets and one thing and another that I've tried and other rifles. And there was a box of bullets there kind of looking at me. <laughs> the the box said Hornady 180 grain SSTs. And I thought, you know, I've shot that bullet in two different rifles and had extremely good accuracy. I think that I'll try it. Just on just on a guess. Well, I moved back to my back to my target here and having shot all these big groups that you see here those three shots with the SST bullet there's three shots here in 489 489 .489 right there you can see them well I found what I wanted and of course I've used up quite an area on the target here and I repeated that one more time on the other target, and I got virtually the same, the same type of group. And all the time that I was shooting, I was working against the condition somewhat. I live in country that the wind blows for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. Right now it's been blowing here for a month. It's pretty still here this morning. I should be out shooting instead of talking, really. But here we are. Anyway, you see, this kind of gives you an idea. Some of these subtle, subtle, subtle changes in component, leaving everything else that's the same. Normally, when I change anything, I only change one thing at a time to determine what is actually working. Well, I felt pretty good. So, I thought, well, I'm going to try another rifle I had waiting to be, have load work up, happen to be a, a 257 Weatherby, and I had shot that rifle a little bit. I really wasn't getting anywhere, and I picked a place on the target to shoot. And the first three shots out of that 257 was up here, holding on this, on this orange square. Well, yeah, that's about where I'd left things, not doing worth a darn. And I thought, well, you know, I think I'll let my charge with this particular rifle, after having measured my case head, case head, to see if it was expanding and it hadn't expanded at all. I simply up my charge, leaving everything else the same, I up my charge by one grain. So from that three shot string, by upping the charge one grain, this small three shot group here that measures just over a half of an inch, I shot that group right there. And you kind of notice that there's two bullets in one hole and one out a little bit. This is a little bit of this breeze condition that I was having while I was shooting. Not hardly measurable on any wind meter, but just a little bit of breeze, a little bit of air movement that you couldn't pick up on a wind meter. If I had been shooting in dead still, I think that, you know, they'd been probably about touching. And anyway, that that's what I did with this situation. I'm going to set this down. Anyway, I'm going to describe some things here beyond what I've described. I get a considerable amount of correspondence asking for help with, with, with loads. And the average person doesn't have any idea what to do or where to go. They think the rifle's no good. They think that they got 
I saw a rifle. They're shooting a factory rifle, probably. There's a lot of choices out here for factory rifles, some what higher grade rifles. And a goodly share of people are shooting some of these higher, little bit higher grade, higher dollar rifles from these various, various outfits that are producing them. And I've checked out some of these rifles. I've looked them over. I've shot some of these different rifles. And I really haven't had any issues. But the average guy is throwing his hands up and he's sending the rifle back to the company. And bothering the, the company and giving them the, the dickens that there's something wrong with this rifle. And 99 times out of 100, that rifle was set back, sent back to them just as they received it along with the note that they found nothing wrong with the rifle. Well, here's the, here's the real issue, folks. Any of these situations, any of these rifles are only going to shoot eventually to the potential of the knowledge base of the reloader that's loading for his rifle. This is a fact. Now, you see, I brought this target into issue here with two different cartridge calibers. Same sort of kind of situation. And by a subtle change, it showed that I didn't have a sorry rifle. This rifle had a match grade barrel on, uh, you know, on it. The second rifle I spoke about also had built by me, chambered by me, bedded by me, scoped by me, you know, and I'm working with this. So to some extent, it's not an awful lot different, except from my experience, and I, you know, you don't know until you try something. And almost invariably, people give up, and they love to blame, they love to blame an area where blame isn't due. And this is, this is not good. So these are the sort of situations that I see. We've got another issue here besides. I'm an experienced shooter shooting at the bench and working up loads for over 60 years now. 60 years. And I never had any real troubles from the beginning. When I started, I just had some savvy and I used it to my benefit to work up loads for a rifle. And I enjoy taking something from where it was, where it started out, down to where it's to the potential of the rifle and the shooter and the components that you're using. And everybody holds a rifle different. Everybody looks in the scope a little bit different and one thing or another. Everything's different. You know, I've experienced situations where there are folks that are older and they have heart trouble and their heart beats pretty slow and they don't have a very quick repeated pulse. And so everything's really kind of cool and calm. And as a rule, those guys they shoot one whole groups one whole groups with rifles that I have built, worked up a load for, and they've done their part, maybe tinkered with this and tinkered with that in the way of the load, but I'm pointing out all these aspects that you need to take into consideration. People seem to, people seem to have the idea that I'm pulling their leg that you can take a rifle that's shooting an inch and a quarter, inch and a half group, and all of a sudden, by a subtle change, it's going to go to a half of an inch or better, you see? And the, this is what this is all about. This is what this, this, you know, this passion, this passion that I have and, and, and others have is really all about. How old were you when you started working uploads? Well... I'm 71 years old, and I was 10. I was 10 years old, so I, you know, and I said for over 60 years, it's over 60 years, because I'm not, I'm not too, too far into, into my 71st year, 
But anyway, you know, I had I had a little bit of guidance and one thing or another, you know, got the tools, worked with this and worked with that. And the first things that I worked with, I had I had a particular rifle at the time that I had that I had put together, you know, and messed around with a little bit and and shot and eventually, you know, I obtained other rifles and different situations and you know by the time I was 14, 15 years old, I think that actually that I knew more about the reloading aspect than the average person knows. Because I was very interested and I love to see those nice tight groups, one thing or another. Now I'm going to include something that's important in on this. When you're working up loads, you always need to use a one inch micrometer divided in one ten thousandths of an inch so that you can read the belt expansion or the head expansion on the cartridge cases. And everybody is repeatedly asking me, even though I've said it before, where do you measure the case? You measure the case immediately ahead on the, the body of the case, just ahead of the extractor group. And I'm talking about a 32nd of an inch, not, not clear all the way up on the belt, just up on the belt a 32nd of an inch from the extractor group. Or up on the case, a normal unbelted case, the same, the same fashion. And I happen to use a ball, a ball micrometer. Each one of the anvils have a ball on them. I did this many years ago. You can buy them and attach it to your normal flat face micrometer. You can buy the flat face, the ball face. You can buy a micrometer with blades, and those will all work. You just need to learn how to use your tools. And through all this process, along with using that micrometer and using a reliable chronograph and paying attention to details and paying attention to your velocity spreads, and the result of those velocity spreads is a standard deviation of your loads. As, as a rule, when things tighten up, you have accuracy. I was frustrated with the work up this 300 Winchester because I had single div digit standard deviations, but I didn't have any accuracy. And when I finally hit on that load, that particular load, I had a standard deviation of five. But all the time I was hanging in the single digits from nine down to three. And anyway, all these details you've got to pay attention to. Besides the fact the rifle's got to be bedded properly, it's got to have a mount system put on it that's everything is tight. The scope's got to be mounted on there with the with the reticle perpendicular, not not candid like this, straight perpendicular, perpendicular. And the average person holds the rifle. One guy will will can his rifle this way, another guy will can his rifle that way. And, you know, and they think that they've mounted their scope true. It's not mounted true at all. It's crooked. The reticle is candid like this. That's not going to work, folks. It's going to be pretty much the same if everything's the same at 100 yards. But when you go out there to 400 yards or so, that bullet's going to be shooting over here in the yonder. Because the barrel's not lined up. To the reticle. The barrel's here and the reticle's looking here so you're going to shoot over here or you're going to shoot over here. You see? This is what happened. I've corrected these things for folks and they tell me that their scope came back. The scope was crooked. No. They're crooked. They've got their head. They've got their head this way. You see? They're looking like this. Like that. You see? They're tipping the rifle to the left or to the right into their body or out from their body. And all these things play into play into these group situations. And 
I'm going to just talk just a little bit about powder burn rate. Almost invariably, people are using a powder burn rate that's too fast for the cartridge. The loading manual has, has all sorts of information from fairly medium burn rates to very slow burn rates. As a rule, the, slow, the slower the powder, the lower the pressure in relationship to the powder charge. When you up the burn rate of the powder, you also change how everything works. You change the pressure curve. This pressure curve is fairly important to do with accuracy. So look at your look at your reloading manual. And not every loading manual has every powder in it. This is another subject that well the loading manual doesn't have that powder in it. Well that's just because they didn't have that powder on hand to be able to use at the time that they wrote that load manual and did their testing. It does not mean that because I said to use this powder or that powder that you shouldn't be using it. If I recommend a powder to you, it's because I recommend it from experience. Not once or twice, but maybe over 50 years or better experience, you see. So, this, this is a situation. And, you know, this accuracy game, this accuracy game, there's no free lunch. There's no free lunch. So, don't blame some other situation. Now, there are situations, depending on where the rifle came from, who did it, who worked on it, maybe the particular individual, the gunsmith or whatever. Yeah, there's things that happen. But as a rule, the real problem is right there with, with the individual working with his rifle at the time. 